The tests are both conducted using a normal selection of hand tools. But you will also need an engine tachometer to precisely monitor RPM changes and a set of four wood blocks. The blocks will be used to secure the truck during testing. Take two of the blocks and lock them against the front tires. You will be running the truck at full speed during testing and you must prevent the vehicle from lurching forward. Now take the remaining blocks and secure the steer tires so the truck can't jump backward. With the tires blocked, apply the handbrake as a final bit of insurance. The truck is now sufficiently secure to conduct both of the stall tests. Now, start up the truck's engine and make sure it is warm. The truck's engine must be at the normal operating temperature prior to testing. Now, stop the engine. Take the tachometer and attach it to the engine. The tach will aid you by monitoring slight changes in the truck's RPM level. First, we will check the engine's no-load governed maximum speed. While the engine is running at full speed, check the reading on the tachometer. Now compare the reading with the specifications listed in the repair manual. We are working on a truck with a 5R engine. The manual lists the no-load governed maximum speed as 2600 RPM in this case. If the result of your test differs from the speed listed in the manual, the engine must be tuned up. Be sure to refer to the engine tune-up section of the repair manual before you perform the tune-up. Now, let's find the engine maximum speed when loaded. This involves two steps. First, set the tilt level backwards and pull the truck's mast back until it is in the relief state. Now, press the accelerator pedal full stroke. While you are running the engine up to full speed, keep an eye on the tack. You will notice a drop from the no-load governed maximum speed. Compare the test result with the specifications listed in the repair manual. In the case of the 5R engine we are testing, the drop must be 200 RPM. When testing a truck with a 2J engine, the drop must be 100 RPM. And if we were testing an LPG truck, the drop would be slightly more than 200 RPM. You can not only see this drop, but you can hear it as well. Listen this time as the engine drops from the no-load maximum governed speed to the maximum speed when loaded. Although you should be familiar with this sound, always use an engine tachometer during testing. The tach will always detect RPM changes the human ear may miss. Our test confirms this truck meets specifications. But what if the test produces an excessive speed drop? If the drop is larger than the standard listed in the manual, the air governor needs to be readjusted. Remember, be sure to refer to the air governor adjustment section of the manual before starting the work. If our engine stall test had revealed the trouble source, there would be no need to continue testing. But our check confirms the engine is OK, so we must perform the transmission stall test. This time, we will be looking for two transmission stall speeds. We have to check the truck in forward gear and also in reverse. It doesn't matter which gear you start the test in. So this time, let's put the truck in forward gear. First, get the truck up to the maximum speed. Next, drop the speed down so that the engine is idling and put the truck into gear. Now, rev up the engine to find the test stall speed. Unlike the last test, this time there should be a large change in the engine speed. 
This truck's maximum speed is 2,600 RPM. The result of the stall test is 1,700 RPM. Now, let's repeat this stall test procedure while in reverse. Run the truck to the maximum speed. Then, let the truck idle and put it into gear. Rev up the engine and check the tack reading. As in the last test, watch the change from the maximum speed to the stall speed. The maximum speed is 2600 RPM. The stall speed level is 1700 RPM. Now, let's compare our test results with the specifications listed in the repair manual. The manual lists the stall speed for different engine types as follows. On a 4P engine, the stall speed is 1800 RPM. On the 5R type we've been working with, the stall speed is also 1800 RPM. And finally, on a 5P engine, the stall speed is 1600 RPM. But in reality, stall speeds could vary up to 100 RPM either way from those listed in the book because of manufacturing differences. Keep in mind, the stall speeds listed in the manual are not absolute and should only be used as troubleshooting guidelines. Since our test results were both 1700 RPM, they do fall within acceptable standards. But what would happen if the tests had turned out differently? Suppose when comparing our results with the manual, we found our stall speeds were too low. If the results show a drop of 300 or more RPM, the stator one-way clutch is slipping. Be sure to check the repair manual for the correct procedures to make the repairs. Finally, if the stall speeds turn out too high, the clutches are slipping badly. They will have to be disassembled for inspection and possibly repaired. Once again, check the repair manual for the proper steps to follow. With the check complete, we can remove our test equipment. Disconnect the tachometer and remove it from the engine. Finally, remove the wood blocks from the truck tires. Once all of the blocks have been taken away, the truck is once again operational. In summary, if a truck is suffering from insufficient power, two stall tests must be conducted to isolate the problem area. The first is the engine stall test to find the no load governed maximum speed. And the second is the engine stall test to find the maximum speed when loaded. If the problem is isolated in the engine, repairs can be made. But if the engine checks out, a transmission stall test must be conducted. The transmission stall test must be conducted in both the forward gear and in reverse. The results of these two tests are then compared to the manufacturer's specifications. The stall speed should be within 100 RPM of specified standards, allowing for manufacturing differences. And finally, all checks and adjustments must be made in accordance with the procedures listed in the repair manual. Following the manual carefully will ensure repairs to the truck are made in the quickest and most efficient manner possible. The test is easy to conduct, but be sure to follow the procedures spelled out in the repair manual. Following the manual eliminates the wasted time caused by unnecessary repairs. To conduct the pressure check, you need a three gauge manifold and adapters, an engine tachometer, and a normal selection of hand tools. With the equipment ready, let's get the truck set up. First, start the engine and let it warm up. The transmission oil must be warmed to normal operating temperature prior to testing. Make a check of the transmission oil level with the engine off. If you find the fluid level is too low, add more oil. All Toyota PowerShift transmissions 
use type F automatic transmission fluid. Now install the tachometer, connecting it to the truck's engine. The tach will help you precisely monitor speed levels during testing. Next, the three gauge manifold must be connected to the transmission to measure several pressure readings. We will be locating the transmission's main pressure, the clutch pressure level, and the torque converter pressure. We will be hooking up the gauges to these pressure ports on the transmission. The main pressure is found through this port. The clutch pressure is found here. And the converter pressure port is here. First, unscrew and remove all three port plugs so the three connections can be made. Now, we can find a place to hang the three gauge manifold and begin to make the connections. First, we will connect the adapter and gauge, which will allow us to find main pressure. Make sure the connection is tight before you begin pressure testing. Next, connect the adapter and gauge, which will measure the clutch pressure. This connection must be secure as well. Finally, attach the adapter and gauge to find the converter pressure. As in the first two cases, this must also be on tight. With the manifold in place, the truck must be prevented from moving. This is important as the test calls for pressure readings to be taken while the engine speed is 2,000 RPM. The safest way to accomplish this is to jack up the front axle. First, raise the mast and tilt it back. Then place a support, such as these wood blocks, under the mast's outer rail. Now, tilt the mast forward. Once the mast is positioned, the forward tire will be off the ground. With the truck set, we can now conduct the pressure checks. We are actually looking for several sets of pressure readings. First, we must confirm the main and clutch pressure while the truck is idling. Put the truck in gear and let the engine idle. Check the clutch pressure gauge. Note the delay in pressure buildup. This delay is caused by the operation of the modulator valve. The modulator valve ensures the truck goes into gear smoothly. It also prevents shock to the drive gear every time the truck is shifted. In this test, the main pressure reading is 80 pounds per square inch, and the clutch pressure reads 70 pounds per square inch. Now, let's compare these readings with the specifications listed in the repair manual. The manual lists the acceptable range for the main pressure while idling as 28 PSI to 85 PSI. The clutch pressure must fall within the range of 21 PSI to 85 PSI. Now, compare the results to the manual specifications we can see this truck's pressure readings are acceptable. Next, we must conduct a series of pressure checks while the engine is running at 2,000 RPM. These checks will be conducted in forward and reverse gear as well as in neutral. The pressure results are then compared with the specified standards to isolate the problem source. Let's start the pressure check with the truck in forward gear. Now, increase the truck's engine speed to 2,000 RPM. While maintaining the speed, check the readings on the three gauges. At 2,000 RPM in this case, the main pressure is 150 PSI. The clutch pressure in this test is also 150 PSI. And finally, the converter pressure reading is 21 PSI. Once these readings have been noted, put the truck in reverse and repeat the pressure check. With the truck in gear, increase the speed again to 2,000 RPM and check the gauge readings. Finally, put the gear shift at the neutral position and check the main and converter pressure once again. Now, 
Compare the pressure check results with the specifications listed in the repair manual. This time, the manual lists the acceptable main pressure range at 2,000 RPM as 128 PSI to 185 PSI. The clutch pressure must be between 121 and 185 PSI. And the converter pressure range is from more than 18 PSI to more than 28 PSI. These are the results from our pressure check in forward gear. This is how the check turned out in reverse. And finally, these are the readings taken while the truck was in neutral. In this case, the results all fall within the required ranges. But what if test results fail to fall within the acceptable standards? If this is the case, you must refer to the torque converter section of the repair manual. The possible pressure variations are listed along with recommended repairs. For example, the pressure test could produce this situation. The main pressure reading in neutral is within the normal range acceptable for this truck. But when the pressure check is made in forward or reverse, the pressure reading is lower than the specified standards. In this case, there are several items which must be checked. First, there may be an oil leak between the selector valve and the seal rings. Second, the seal rings may be worn or broken. Third, the clutch piston may be damaged or the piston ring may be broken. And finally, the main shaft oil passage plug may have fallen out. Any of these items may be the source of the transmission problem. If any of the items have to be repaired or replaced, make sure you refer to the repair manual to follow the proper procedure. With the checks complete, tilt back the truck's mast and remove the wood blocks supporting the truck. Now, remove the three gauge manifold connections from the transmission pressure ports. Then, reinstall the port plugs, making sure each of the three plugs is on tight. The plugs must be on securely before the truck is again put into operation. Finally, disconnect the tachometer from the engine and remove it from the truck. The lift truck is now once again ready for service. In summary, transmission-related problems in the lift truck can be isolated by conducting a transmission pressure test. This check will locate the transmission's main pressure, the clutch pressure, and the torque converter pressure. A three-gauge manifold will allow you to find the three different pressure readings simultaneously. First, find the main and clutch pressures while the truck is idling. Then, find the main, clutch, and converter pressures while the truck is running at 2,000 RPM. The pressure checks at 2,000 RPM must be conducted while the truck is in forward, neutral, and in reverse. The repair manual contains a troubleshooting chart in the torque converter section of the book to help analyze the pressure test results.